The book that you see on the left, Staying Fat for Sarah Burns, is a book that I mentioned I would read because when I made my book talk recently about whale talk, I said there's an intriguing title and I ordered it on eBay already and when I'm done with it, I'll talk about it. It's intriguing for me because what is that all about? I read the back description and you have this character who I think is depicted on the cover. She's turning away like that in that angle because her face is really burned uh, with all these scars and everything. And her hands are also because she had this tragic accident when she was three years old. Her good friend is Eric Calhoun and he's a swimmer and he's a great swimmer, but he's very heavy. They nickname him Moby because of being like a whale, like from Moby Dick. But I have to mention that as you see this cover and you see this cover, this boy on the cover is not the main character of Whale Talk because the main character of Whale Talk I describe in my other video as someone who looks nothing like who you see on the cover. So what's that all about? This guy here should not represent the main character either because on the cover you see this guy's very fit. The main character repeatedly in this book is referred to as being very fat. So they make different covers and they even made a different title for this book in another edition. They called the book The Secrets of Sarah Burns. At first, when I was looking at that on goodreads.com, I thought maybe they have another book, like a sequel about this. I said, that'll be interesting. And you're going to see why I think that would be interesting. But I think it's just the same book. They just changed the title to be more politically correct. And also, again, why then? Do the characters not match the front cover of the book? Is it because they're not going to sell as many copies if they have a really heavy kid swimming in the water and that type of thing? So, But it's a book about this main character, Eric, who stays heavy and so he could remain friends with who he's describing as one of the ugliest people in the world, who's this dear friend of his, but that's how she's described in the summary of the book, because of her scars and her disfigurement. And they're in high school, and they have this class called CAT, C-A-T, Contemporary American Thought. They discuss a lot of difficult topics like abortion and so forth. There are two very religious characters in this book, but one of them is um, very conservative, right-wing type. And he speaks out against abortion, fornication, etc. And the other one is sort of like just making light of religion. His name's Ellerby because Ellerby's dad is an Episcopalian pastor. So he's sort of rejecting the church sort of. It's sort of hard to understand. Is he a follower, a believer or not? That's Ellerby. He's a friend of Eric, the main character. Then the other guy who I said is very religious is Mark Bretain. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's him and his brothers. That's how they're named. So you're going to get some surprise twists in this book because you're going to find out not everything is what it seems. It's a very divisive topic when you get into pro-life, pro-choice. It's also very divisive when you're even speaking about image and uh, weight all types of things. I myself will say this. I am not a fan of public schools as much as private schools because if you are going to a private school where you're allowed to speak about religion, for instance, that makes sense to me because in this contemporary American thought class, the teacher says, hey, you guys can't bring religion into this too much, but it's directly connected to what they're talking about. So there's not a lot of free speech there. So, so many things are controversial when you actually open your mouth and you have an opinion. But if you want to be very careful in life and just not say anything, you won't offend anybody. So all I'm saying is I believe in free speech and in the right place in the right time. And I, and I think you just can't, if you can't describe your beliefs and and if you're religious and you're a believer and your world revolves around that. Everything you do 
should be connected to that. So there are some of those topics that are going to be in this book. There's also some action and mystery sports. Also a big thing with Chris Crutcher's books. And what's important that I mention is that in the end, I feel like I was uh, hoping to extract as much uh, meaning or inspiration from this book as I am from every book I read, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. I'm always hoping to get a message from it. And how does it relate to my life? How does it inspire me? Just think about the train of thought. This character is staying fat for somebody because he feels that if he gets into shape, he is going to be slipping away from her life. He's going to get new friends. They're no longer going to be friends. It's an interesting psychology. But at the end of the book, you find that there's not a whole lot of tug of war going on inside this guy's head. He really is content being the way he is, which is 100% fine because everybody is free to do what they want to do in life. As the reader, we're all going to walk away with our own interpretation and what we get out of it. We're not all the same. And that's why I like to keep my videos positive and I don't like to give a one star, two star review of anything. It's either positive or nothing at all. And I'm, I'm focusing on the positive. It doesn't have to mean a movie or a book is one of my top 20 favorites. It just means that I'm looking at what is positive out of this. What can I get out of this? And what could I share with you guys? So that's his character and how he's, he's content with where he is. It's not this big, huge struggle that's focused on. It's not really affecting him. He's made it through high school at the end of this book, and it's not tormenting him being picked on for what he's been through like it would other people. That's my take on it. Whereas Sarah Burns, who has this disfigurement and these scars and everything, she's suffering. She has a lot of emotional pain, and at one point in the book, she even stops talking, and she's in a psychiatric ward. And the thing is, there's going to be a twist and turn there where you're going to read something that I don't want to spoil for you. But what I do wish is that the book would be more from her perspective and understanding what's going on more in her mind. It's written from his perspe perspective. And like I said, he's already content to be the way he is, it seems. He's not really struggling to try to come to a, you know, to him, the solution is not to be a fit guy, even though he's, he's, doing these grueling swimming practices, he's still purposely remaining heavy. Like I said, you don't see him on the cover. They put this fit person on the cover. So that's fine. That's, that's his character. But her character seems to be in a lot more pain. When you look at really what did happen to her and how she also only has one parent in her life, the swimmer, Eric, he also only has one parent in his life. But with her, you don't get, you don't know a whole lot of what's going on in her life. You don't know what are, what you find out some of her dreams, which I like one of, one of these dreams she has about going somewhere, but I'm not going to spoil that for you, but you just have to fill in the blanks yourself and figure out what is really going through her mind because it makes you wonder, does she wish she could have a relationship with somebody. She's just labeled as this outcast who's so ugly that there's just like no hope at all for her. And she's actually been not given a chance to have a cosmetic surgery earlier in her life when this happened purposely. Her father did not want her to have that. And you're going to read more about him and what's going on there. So thank you for watching. And that's all I have to say.